Hello everybody, welcome back. So today we will understand about Spring Batch. Basically what we are going to do here is we will create a Spring Batch project. We will read a CSV file basically from a uh, static file path and then we will store that CSV file in our database using Spring Batch and JPA. So let's get started. So before going into Spring Batch, we need to understand what is what is actually a batch processing. So batch processing are basically a programs that can read a large file and can do anything that you can think of. Like maybe a reading the file and storing directly into a database, reading a file and generating a report or performing any task which is quite huge and time consuming is what we consider in terms of batch processing. Now batch processing is basically very important in terms of any industrial uh, project that you are working on uh, because data handling and computation is one of the most CPU intensive task and that task should be executed in parallel and in the background. So that is a bit about batch processing. What is a spring batch? Uh, basically spring batch is a module given by spring uh, basically a lightweight and a framework which consists of all the elements that are required for a typical batch processing application from small to large sized applications now spring batch doesn't only stops there it provides a lot of other uh, technical advancement in terms of the features and and it can support really really high and huge volume of data I have personally used Spring Batch quite a lot, so I, you can understand. Uh, I, 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 from my experience, it it is really scales a lot and increases the performance. So now one of the uh, one of the familiarity or one of the basic uh, uh, basics of Spring Batch is it is you can use any kind of POJO based approach, and Spring Framework will do all for you, right? So let's see uh, basically uh, some of the important aspects of Spring Batch, uh, some of the key components of Spring Batch. Let's understand the architecture of Spring Batch. Now in a Spring Batch, one of the major component that handles the execution of a job is a job component, right? So uh, as you can see in, from the diagram above, a job component is basically what it is responsible for. Uh, handling any job in Spring Batch. Now, a job component can have multiple steps. Sorry for that, it will be one to N basically here. So a, a job can have multiple steps. So each step will have three different sub steps, which are item reader, item processor, and item writer. Now, once we have all these three steps over here, what it does is it is capable of reading from any kind of data sources if you want to read from any other any data source like let's say in a file system or something known as a database or from anywhere it is capable to read now the item processor is not going to store anything it is basically going to process whatever you are putting you are passing from the item reader now the next step will be the item item processor that will process the data now after the item processor the item writer will come into the picture so item writer is responsible for writing to any other data sources like rdbms nosql mysql jms file system anything it could be now one of the interesting point over here is a job if you want any information regarding a job right you will have a job instance basically or on that specific job if you want to have any kind of uh, information that is hold by the job instance basically job instance will hold the job related information but there comes a job execution now this executions basically there are various types of execution context in the spring batch so job execution and step execution are, are the two different types of uh, execution context basically in a spring batch now spring batch persists the execution context which helps in cases where you want to restart a batch suppose let's say something fatal error has occurred or something bad has happened now all that is needed is to put any object to be shared between steps into the context and that framework will take care of the rest now if you want to store any of the data you put it in step suppose let's say your step is failing 
or something happened you put the data in step execution if your job level something is happening you put the data into the job execution context now once you put that data into the execution context uh, after that restart the values from those execution context are restarted and restored from the database and it gets applied again to start your job so that is how the job execution pausing running all those things happens in inside a job or a step via the execution context now we have a job launcher now what is the purpose of job launcher so job launcher basically if you, if you have any job right that will get executed via a job launcher so now job launcher responsibility is to launch that specific job now if you see job launcher can communicate directly to jpa repository job can also communicate to jpa repository step can also communicate to jpa repository now what is this jpa repository now jpa repository is that mechanism in spring batch with which it is possible for you to store the data into the database and once a job is launched a job execution is obtained from the repository this is important over here when you are launching a job a job execution is getting obtained from the repository now how do i get the information you will get the information from the job repository and this this information is helpful when if if you are um, executing the job either by job execution or by step execution so now the corresponding is also correct so now if something happens right the job instance executions will pass on this data via job and that will also get stored into the job repository so job repository is basically uh, responsible for storing all the information regarding job batch batch job steps etc so this is in short a detailed explanation of the architecture so if you have understood please let me know or if you have not understood that also you let me know but you will understand the code if you have understood few of the parts like job job instances execution uh, step execution um, item reader item writer item processor job launcher and job repository so let's now start Uh, writing some piece of code to see this architecture in action create a spring batch application so we'll go to start.spring start.spring.io so we will add <coughs> spring batch first of all batch uh, then we will add jpa right then we will add maybe mysql for now right so so i think we can we can change the project extracting it and i'll just copy the path and we'll open intellij so we'll open the project go to downloads right so now that we have opened the project so let's 
project will get built and then it will open up so in the meanwhile uh, what i will do is i'll just check my mysql database is up and running or not so basically i'm running mysql via docker Just <clears throat> check it once. Yep, so my MySQL is running properly. Just create a schema inside HomeDB and we'll just point it out in our application to properties. So now in application to properties, what we are going to do is we are going to just we'll just copy paste it from one of my project that I've created earlier. This project if you want this project is similar to this go to src main resources so now we'll copy all this url will just change my database url so as of now i am using homedb i think my database name is homedb Yes, so my database name is homedb, port is 3306, all are good, right, so yes, that's it. Now we'll go to my Java file, now this is, now what we are going to do is, we are, we are having a GIF, uh, we are having this data.csv which contains the zip code data basically, I have downloaded that zip code data and formatted it in some way. So this is the data that I am going to use, so I'll just save the data under downloads data.csv right. and what I will do is I will just copy this data.csv my resources folder I'll just I'll just copy it I will just put it in my class path our class path is under resources I'll just give it a CSV I don't know if this is there or not I think I should be okay I don't know if IntelliJ is able to read this one so if you see, I have the zip code, official UPS city name, official UPS state code, official state name, all those data are there. So I almost have, I think, uh, almost 3,000 or 10,000 records. Yeah, once it's 100,000, 10,000 records, uh, somewhere around 10,000 records. So we'll, st we'll store these 10,000 records in our DB using Spring Batch, right? So let's go ahead and create the entity. So First, create a package known as entity and we'll create the zip code entity package. So, my entity is basically zip code. Now, if you see, um, I will need to have a mechanism to map it as entity. strategy as uh, identity sorry right so we have given the strat strategy as identity and what we're going to do is we're going to have three fields rabbit string zip code and I will have the private string maybe city name Right, and then I will have the private string state name. 
right so i'm having this three entities so i'll just go ahead and generate and get and set up i have not added lombok as of now you, if you want you can add lombok that is totally okay and then i will generate a constructor so we'll generate a default constructor and we will generate the parameterized constructors so we'll generate all these parameterized constructors as well so as my id is going to be generated automatically so i'll just remove this from my constructor parameters right so yeah so this is my entity that i have created so let me check if my spring application is running me some error okay so i have not uh, fired the database so i'll do one thing uh, i will enable the batch processing maybe i will create the job config here, here itself right just create the job job config zip code job config because i have used only Spring patch. I need to configure the JPA data um, also. So what I will do is, yeah, I can I can auto wear it here. So configuration. Then we are we need to have this annotation at the rate enable batch processing so whatever class you are writing right you need to have this batch processing annotation enabled so this initializes the spring batch now there are a few things i need to use i need to have a job right so we will use the job builder factory in order to create the steps we will have a step builder factory so just auto wearing job builder factory so using this i will be configuring my job and same way i will just uh, use step builder factory i think yes so step builder factory i will use so my steps i am just creating my step as of now then i have to auto wear the data sources so now Just talk to the data source as well. And in order to access the zip code um, repository is needed, so I'll just go ahead and create a repository. repository so I have created my repository so this repository I will use to access my <coughs> zip code entity right so let's extend it with that repository which should be okay for us I will give the zip code and then we'll give it as long so my return um, ID type is long so that's okay so now my zip code and long I have given so my ID type is zip code um, long so that's the reason I'm giving this so we'll keep it as it is now my repositories has been configured I might need to auto wear the repository as well so we'll do it later so now what I need to do is uh, I need to have this mapping right so before going into the mappings what I will do is I will create an item reader I'll create a writer and I'll create a step. Right, I don't need a processor, so I'm not creating a processor. So what I'm going to do is I'm creating I'm going to create a job. So basically, how do you create a job? So you give the bean name as I'm using Java configuration, so it is easier. So you give create a job and you get the method name as job. So now using the job builder factory what you right yeah so using the job builder factory what you can use you 
can build a job job builder factory dot okay this is the name of the job i'll just give this hard coded as of now then you can then you can do a start then in the start you can give the step so now i need to configure the step as well so step one i am giving right now okay and then we do dot build to build the job right so now i need to configure the step basically so my step will consist of item reader writer and processor so now i don't need a processor i'll just read and write right so i'll just uh, in the step in this this will return me a step so i because i need a step so i'll just import the class sorry something happened sorry so it comes from org.springframework.batch.code now in order to configure a step you need a step builder factory dot step builder factory dot get you give the state name <coughs> step 1 and then you do you can read it via chunk as well so you give the chunk as well and then you give the chunk size as 1000 I, i want to read the file in chunks that's the reason i'm giving it as chunk size basically and inside the reader i can do a per, i i need to define the reader and writer now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to read the file from uh, csv right so in my reader i'm going to use the flat file item reader so i have a flat file item reader so what i am going to do is i'll be i am going to use flat file item reader so now in flat file item reader what i am going to pass is zip code because i am i am going to store this as an entity right what is the type of my uh, data that i am going to pass to the next step the type is going to be zip code now zip code reader so let's pass on to this now what i am going to return over here is basically i am going to create a flat file item reader object right i am going to create a flat file item reader object now this flat file item reader object is basically my reader now this reader what i am going to tell him is you skip the lines first line you skip because it is a csv so i'll ask him to skip the first line right and then what i am going to do is i am going to set a resource to read the file so i am just going to set a resource it will be a class path resource so if you have not seen this um, reading the files from class path or any other ways in spring boot you can refer to the link in description you can you can read files from various other sources as well so that i have created a small blog post and refer to that so now i have read the csv file now this this step will read the csv file now while reading the csv file i need to map that csv file to this zip code object right so what for that what i am going to do i am going to read it file line by line so i'll go default line mapper so this is the mapper so and this again will get take zip code and i'm going to use a custom line mapper basically i'm going to use a custom line mapper over here right so my default line mapper is created now as this are delimited by uh, semicolon we need to have a delimited tokenizer so delimited tokenizer so delimited tokenizer what it will do it will read the file and see if whatever whatever columns are there right if you see this columns were delimited by yeah so this columns were del delimited by semicolon so it will read one by one from this file and then it will put it into a variable so that code we need to write so we'll create a delimiter object right and in this delimiter what we what i am going to do is i am going to tell him what what is the delimiter going to define the delimiter so my delimiter is semicolon now this delimiter what i am going to do is 
Now there is one more uh, thing is there now uh, because we need to extract the header names as well, right? So tokenizer will extract based on the header names. So we need to tell tokenizer, okay, these are the header names that you need to extract. So this we are going to tell via this is string, and then we are going to take an array, and this is going to be the set of array, basically. Now based on these names, it, this delimiter is going to delimit it and put it into these variables. In this line mapper, what we need to do next is set tokenizer. So we are going to set the line tokenizer as the tokenizer. So now this tokenizer responsibility is to read that file one by one which are delimited by semicolon and put it into this string array. Now what do, what are the string array that is that we are going to use? Um, we'll open the CSV file once. If you see this CSV file, right, this is the file that I'm going to use. So these are the the lines that uh, we are going to use over here. So these are the values that we will be reading. So now I'll go back to my code. Put those values. Now if you see those values right, this value should be comma separated. So just replace it. of lines not files uh, stored in this variables right now once I have this I need a mapper to map these lines to my object so this is my object right I need to have a mapper so now what I will do is I'll write a custom mapper so I will write a zip code mapper so my okay, so the main job of having a zip code mapper is uh, it will map the data whatever I'm getting using a tokenizer into a field so we'll use a field set mapper right so if you're using a field set mapper then field set mapper will take the zip code because it is going to map it in the form of this now if you're doing this then you need to override this method you need to have an implementation now we are going to tell how the mapping will happen so in this field set, whatever data we have passed to tokenizer saying that in this step, if you see, these are the names. So field set will have this name and the corresponding value which are being, which are being tokenized, right? So now I'll go back to my mapper. Where is my mapper? Yes, so here is my mapper. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do return new zip code and in the zip code what I'm going to do is field set dot read string so once I do a read string I will read the zip code so it is going to be zip underscore code right so let me check if it's the same thing so zip underscore code correct so I'll just copy it from here and put it into this right and then what I'm going to do is comma I need to just check what are the zip code city name and, and state name right just create a copy of this right so if you see I have copied it and I just need to change the name so this is the one I'll just read this I'll just read sequentially 
maybe the data might not be correct i'll just read it directly whatever is there you can map anything i want this is the reason i'm mapping it right now okay so now once i have done this custom line mapping uh, custom mapper for me i need to set set as uh, tell my reader to use that mapper so my line mapper dot set map set field set mapper is there which is going to take the zip code mapper so now this mapping is being done over here now we need to do custom line mapper dot after property set this should be done after your properties are being set and then reader so you reader line mapper it is going to be my custom line mapper so this is my custom line mapper so i'm just going to tell my reader that you use this custom line mapper and this custom line mapper takes all these configurations along with the tokenizer so now i am going to return the reader so this is it i have configured my zip code reader right now what i'll do is um, i'll just define the define a zip code writer so public it is going to be a item writer so the type is going to be an item writer so what is the item writer is going to take it is going to take zip code right so the name will be zip code writer so i have added my zip code writer now once i add my zip code writer what happens is it gives me the set of zip codes whatever has been written in whatever has been re, has been read the previous step by the chunk so i'm going to do this and then here what i'm going to do is i'm going to return zip codes i'm just going to use the java it syntax to Save this in the zip code repository. Okay, I need to do a zip code repository dot save. So I'll just auto where the zip code repository. multiple entities whatever has been converted it is going to return me and just go to dot out dot enter and saving right so i'm just saving the data so let's see what how it happens now right now i'm going to define the steps so my reader is zip code reader right so my reader has been zip zip code reader what is my writer i don't have a processor so i'm just going to do a writer the steps for uh, creating a processor is same so i'm just going to create a zip code writer and then i'm going to do a build so this takes the builder pattern right so what is the problem with the zip code writer da -da 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 -da.
mistake somewhere so try to erase this dot chunk dot reader chunk could be anything actually so just I'll just put it as at the red pin. So my step has been completed now. So my step the reader and writer and all those things are done. So put it into this format. So my step reader writer has been completed. Now my job has been also completed. So I have created a job which calls the step. So these are the steps. Now my job configuration has been completed, but there is still more to do it because as I told you earlier, so the job will be called by the job launcher, right? So I'll go to my, I need to call this via job launcher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an instance of job launcher via command line runner. So we'll just implement command line runner, right? And then we'll override the run method. So now once I have the run method overridden, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do create a job parameter. So now before that, I need to call the job launcher, right? So I need to auto wear the job launcher. Then I'm going to auto wear the job as well. Okay, so, so my job has been auto wear. This has been auto wear. Now I'll call the job launcher with a job parameter. So I'll just write job parameters. And job parameters equals to new job parameters, right? This will be builder basic because I'm building the job. So the job parameters builder, right? And then just putting add a string or something. I'm just passing some key values. So these are my custom data that I'm going to pass. passing uh, this one and then I'm again going to do a add a string let me do an add a string also I'll just uh, put a long variable maybe I'll put a long as job ID and then I'm going to pass on the maybe system dot current time in milliseconds right and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do two job parameters, right? So these are my job parameters that I'm passing. So now once I have passed my job parameter, I'm going to execute the job. job. So I'm going to get a GoJPC execution contest context, right? So I'm going to do job launcher dot run. My job is there and it is going to take a job parameters. Is going to take the job parameters and then once it has been completed and just printing out what I'm going to print is the status so right so this constitutes my code Just 
so now this is my code which uh, saves this set of data in my database now let's run and see what happens as we have written a lot of code so we will just go ahead and run this application so now i'll just give the annotation enable batch processing maybe Let's see what magic happens so it doesn't breaks. Enable to detect the database type. Okay, great. Let me check my database. Okay, so this is 3307. So just this yeah so if you see my job has started running so now if you go to my database okay and let's see what is the name amount of data see if you see this is the tables that got created right see this is the batch of execution this is my batch of execution context right so my context is having this hash map right these are my job execution parameters so these are my parameters that I have added right? and if you see the zip code database table has been created if you see the count Oops, where is the count again so if you see 33 1 to 1 has been inserted right okay so it means it has somewhere around 31,000 database uh, records basically so if you see my job has been completed so my job has been completed if you see the step execution time all those things are there now this is how we execute a job now if you see we have used JP over here right if you see in my code base I have used JP just using jpa.save all you can have a custom writer as well if you want a custom writer you can also add that um, it's a similar way we did for the job config so I think this might help you because I was also struggling to understand how does it work what happens so this is a sh long video so thank you so much for staying back with me and in the next video I will do the same thing with PostgreSQL and I will compare PGSQL versus my SQL performance in Mac as well as I will compare in the Windows so let me know if you really need that video if you think this video is quite helpful please let me know in the comments as well